Breaking news out of the NFL where the Los Angeles Chargers are trading Keenan Allen to the Chicago Bears. This has been confirmed by our Jonathan Jones. LA will receive a fourth round pick in exchange for the six time pro. Five of the Chargers top eight offensive players in terms of scrimmage yards last season are no longer on their roster. The Chargers top two receivers at the moment. Joshua Palmer and their first round pick last year Quentin Johnson. So it doesn't feel like Mahomes or Hurts would be losing these games. Right or wrong, Justin Herbert is the problem. Here's the thing, he's not the problem, but he's paid to be the solution. We're talking about essentially journeymen tight end that are good players, not great. A project at wide receiver that's left over. Palmer, who's had some moments, and then Gus Edwards, who has been like the number two back in Baltimore. Mm. This is a depletion of talent. In 2021, the LA Chargers celebrated as their rookie quarterback clinched the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. Fans absolutely reveled in their new golden era, but this reality falls very, very short. Herbert's prime years are squandered by missteps and relentless underperformance, a tale of comedic mishaps and self-inflicted wounds. Now under a new head coach and with an offense led by a recent draft bust, it's evident the Chargers are derailing Justin Herbert's career. Whether you believe that the cap is an absolute myth or if it's real, it's fair to say that the Chargers have found themselves in cap space hell after the 2023 season. Approximately $40 million over the cap put them in the fourth worst position of any team in the league, meaning some pretty significant changes were on the way. Now, when doing something like this, you would think that the obvious decision would be to shave some contracts like an aging Khalil Mack or even an often injured Joey Bosa contract that obviously could easily be released and cut so that way you could save some of that space. Somebody told me last night nobody's biting on Bosa or Mac because they've got big roster bonuses Huge. due third Huge. day of the league year. Right. The, 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 the league knows that the Chargers are screwed, so why would we trade for guys and we got to pay them all this money right, after, right out of the gates right. when just just cut them and we'll go sign them as free agents. Yeah. I they decided to sacrifice the career of their most precious asset, Justin Herbert. Instead of clearing out the cumbersome defensive contracts that were just obviously too much to pay, releasing wide receiver Mike Williams and tight end Gerald Everett, trading Keenan Allen, and letting running back Austin Eckler walk away. Now, yes, of course, their prized pick in Justin Herbert still does remain, but literally with no assets on offense. But that's good news. I'm sure they can convert Khalil Mack or even Joey Bosa to a star wide out. Justin, the keys are yours now. <laughs> so you're gonna have to run this show as best as you can with the guys who we have in this locker room. Like Peter said, we have a first round last year in Johnson, probably going to draft a receiver this year and uh, with the fifth overall fifth pick, overall. I believe mm -hmm. he said. So it's gonna be a lot of new talent around there in that uh, LA Charger uh, locker room. Yeah and it's going to be on Justin to lead those guys. Yeah. Herbert is a super talented quarterback. Whilst Mahomes exists in his own tier, Herbert belongs with the gaggle of quarterbacks that are in the next tier, such as Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, and Lamar Jackson. At $52.5 million a year, Herbert is the second highest paid player in the NFL and one of the most valuable sporting assets in the world. Now, he did earn that contract because he's pretty damn good, to be honest, but I don't know if he'll be that good when he has absolutely nobody to throw to. Like stripping away the targets that helped make him so successful is by far one of the questionable and most confusing things that they have done as an organization in recent history. Now let's get one thing straight. Letting Mike Williams walk, that obviously probably could have been a good decision considering that he was a very injured receiver at most of the times in the season, but a guy like Keenan Allen, he's still elite. Like, why did you let him walk away? And now, yes, before you go in the comments section telling me how old he is, yes, I know he's 31 years old, but the dude still had like over a hundred receptions this year. And I forget what the number was, but it was seventh best in the NFL. I do know that. His career high in catches produced 1,243 yards, which is the most he had since 2017. Similarly, his peak PFF receiving grade of 87.4 is his highest grade since 2018, 
proving that this 31-year-old receiver still had plenty of left in the tank. Like, yes, in some situations, cutting a guy of that age and that caliber because you can't afford him, I do understand that. But when you have a guy like Justin Herbert, who is still elite, and a guy like Keenan Allen who can raise his ceiling, why wouldn't you keep him on the roster? And I mean, honestly, in my own opinion, it's hard to think now that the Chargers are honestly just wasting Herbert's talent by letting Allen go. Like, I mean, after all, they have ditched him of his big wide receiver in Mike Williams, his running back in Austin Eckler, his tight end in Everett, and also the elite wide receiver in Keenan Allen. Like, there is no way this is going to help him in any way, shape, or form. And now, yes, I understand that this on paper does look terrible, and even just looking at it in general, it sounds awful too, but I'm sure that there is a plan of action here. The question is though, is it a good one? The Chargers are the lucky recipient of the fifth overall selection in a draft that features one of the best wide receiver classes we have ever seen. And considering that the quarterbacks are absolutely loaded, it means that one of the top two pass catchers is surely going to land in their lap. The only problem with that is that the Chargers already treated themselves to a first round wide receiver just one year ago. The rookie season of Quentin Johnston is a great example to prove that honestly, the draft is just an absolute crapshoot when it comes to players. But if they find themselves in another Johnston case and scenario, I honestly don't see any way they come back from this and honestly have any chance of winning the AFC West in any part in the future. Like looking back on it, yes, Johnston does have the size and speed you love to see in a wide receiver, but his ability to separate was greatly lacking. On the occasion where he did manage to find some space, holding onto the ball also appeared to prove very difficult for the kid, leading to many viral highlight reels for all the wrong reasons. The prospects at the top of the 2024 wide receiver class are a level from the prospect that Johnson was coming out of college, but you truly do never know with these things. Another draft bust or an injury could result in Herbert having only Quinton Johnston and Josh Palmer as notable pass catchers. Palmer has shown more than Johnston throughout his career so far, but he remains a fringe wide receiver two or three options. The other elephant in the room here is the arrival of Jim Harbaugh as head coach and Greg Roman as offensive coordinator. Not only did neither of these two have any sentimental attachment to Justin Herbert or Quentin Johnston, but they also love to do one specific thing on offense, run the damn ball. Greg Roman has just been pinched from the Baltimore Ravens where he coached under Jim's brother John. Over recent years, Baltimore has been one of the most run heavy teams in the NFL. And last season, their 31.5 rush attempts per her game was the most of any team. Similarly, Jim Harbaugh used to love running the ball where he coached at the University of Michigan. They averaged 37.3 rush attempts per game, and in one match against Penn State, Harbaugh only asked his quarterback to attempt eight passes. That quarterback? He's named JJ McCarthy, who many believe will be a top 10 pick in this year's upcoming draft so it wasn't because of lack of talent. The fact of the matter is, is that Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh simply want to do one thing, and that's run the ball. And you can tell that this is what they want to do based off of just some of the free agency signings that they've done this offseason. Will Disley and Hayden Hurst are not exactly names to light up the passing game. So. What are they known for? Blocking. Then you add in a thumper like Gus Edwards at the running back position, and it is pretty clear what the blueprint is for next year. Run the ball and improve on defense. <laughs> and now, well, that is all good and fun, but... What about the $52.5 million quarterback you guys have? Like, the dude is the most expensive player on your team. Like, Justin Herbert's probably looking around the locker room and wondering, like, am I going to be the highest paid game manager in the NFL? Even if a stellar rookie receiver joins with the fifth overall pick, they will take some time to get up to speed, and there's no guarantee that they will be as impactful as they hope. And if that does end up becoming the situation, Herbert's going to end up being, like, the worst quarterback in the worst situation on the worst team in the NFL. Like even Patrick Mahomes would struggle with a terrible roster surrounding him and also a bust of a wide receiver that they drafted this year and also a bust of a wide receiver in Quentin Johnson last year and a Joshua Palmer who nobody knows really is how good he really is. In removing the one good thing this offense had last year in Keenan Allen, 
the Chargers have handicapped their quarterback and made them the worst team in the AFC West. In contrast, if the Chargers would have kept their Pro Bowl receiver in Allen, the addition of a promising rookie like Malik Neighbors at the fifth overall pick would be a very exciting proposition. Like if Allen was still on this team, he would have been able to take that wide receiver under his wing, coach them, and show them how to be a dominant and elite wide receiver in the NFL. Justin Herbert would find himself with an embarrassment of riches passing to a wide receiver group that could challenge all areas of the field and bring out the best in the second highest played player in the NFL. Like this scenario would be an exhilarating one for Charger fans and would surely set their quarterback up for another Offensive Player of the Year award or hell, even an MVP. Like it just seemed to make so much sense at the time to keep him around. Neighbors would also bring so much horse power to the offense whilst also offering a natural replacement for Allen when it was time for him to move on. Instead, Justin Herbert's favorite target from last year will be making the next Chicago Bears quarterback a very happy man, whilst the Chargers passing attack instantly becomes one of the most vulnerable in the NFL. $262.5 million is a lot of money to be paying a quarterback. And honestly, besides the money, it doesn't seem like there's much else for Herbert to be excited about in LA. Like, I mean, the dude has to be absolutely just like let down after the Chargers are just ruining his career. And again, I know you guys are gonna hop in the comment section and be like, oh, this is all a part of the rebuild. But if it was a part of the rebuild, then why are they keeping such an old player in Khalil Mack again and a guy like Joey Bosa. Like Bosa has played 14 games in the past, I think like two seasons or something like that. That just doesn't sound like a tear it apart job and rebuild it back up job to me. All they have done is blow up the offense with Harbaugh neglecting the strengths of Herbert and instead opting to do things his own way. And don't get me wrong, Harbaugh had success with the 49ers, but was ultimately fired because of a power struggle in which he wanted more control over the management of the organization. And based off how how things are going so far, it appears he's found that control here, but is that necessarily a good thing? All the offseason moves suggest that a run-heavy approach is the way he wants to operate, just like he did in his last stint in the NFL. In San Francisco, Harbaugh's 49er offense was a top 5 team in rushing attempts in 3 of his 4 seasons and in the top 10 in the other. He appears to be utilizing the same approach here, but it is important to note that the game has changed a lot since Harbaugh was last in charge of an NFL team. And don't get me wrong, I know building a good run game and having a good defense is all a solid thing to do, and that's really a big thing in the NFL. But the way the game is played now, you have to have a solid passing game if you want to keep up and be able to win these games. I mean, take the Browns for example. They banked on their defense in 2023, and look what happened to them as a wildcard team. CJ Stroud absolutely lit them up and the Browns could do nothing to answer. When coaching the 49ers in the early 2010s, Harbaugh also benefited from a top 5 defense, which cannot be said about the team he is adopting now. Last year they became a laughing stock in the league when the Aiden O'Connell led Raiders landed 63 points on their head in a game where defenders picked horrible angles and showed zero tackling ability. Like I mean this Chargers team is completely different from that San Francisco team he coached back in like 2013. Like there has to be a concern about his playstyle being one completely outdated and two even more importantly it doesn't align with what the Chargers have in their system right now. He has opted not to celebrate one of the best quarterbacks in the league and instead side with aging players on defense in a run game spearheaded by Gus Edwards. And yes, I'm sure another offensive playmaker is going to arrive with that fifth overall pick, but again, the looming question is, what if that player doesn't pan out? It was only one year ago that the Chargers busted on a first round wide receiver, and another miss here would doom the Chargers season from the get go. And not only that, but would continue the trend of wasting Justin Herbert's amazing career. He is one of the best quarterbacks in the league, handicapped by a team that drafted him. Or just maybe, is there a crazy move around the corner to maybe even trade away Herbert and help Harbaugh land him as Michigan man JJ McCarthy? It's wild to even consider trading an asset like Herbert, but I mean this is the NFL silly season and we could all speculate it, so why don't we? But I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think the Chargers are wasting Herbert or is Harbaugh going to turn him around? Let me know down in the comment section below and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.